Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special presentation of Pro Box TV, your boxing channel from the Club Union Electrica in the northern part of Argentina in Cordoba. This is going to be quite a fight card in association with Samsung Boxing and Teo Box. We have three excellent fights for you here on Pro Box TV, starting with Juan Gabriel Oscar Cejas going up against Alexis Sicilia for the Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title, then Nicolas Vergara be taking on the Panamanian Gerardo Murillo for the WBA Fede Latin featherweight title and the main event features Neri Ariel Cruz Romero going against Miguel Mejia as an Argentine going up against a Mexican for the vacant WBO Latino super featherweight title but our first fight is going to be Juan Cejas against Alexis Sicilia and this one at 122 pounds I'm George Dimatelis alongside Chris Algieri as we get ready for this one, is Sejas looking to go undefeated or remain undefeated? And Alexis Sicilia coming in on a four fight win streak, looking to extend and get his record to 500 to borrow a term from other sports. Here are the ring introductions, the ring announcer, and the fighter introductions here, beginning with Sejas. Y en el rincón rojo, récord oficial, seis combates realizados, seis triunfos para el invicto, el terrible de Salta, Juan Gabriel Oscar Seca. Es árbitro y señor Christopher Bon, Christopher, good man. If my Italian is correct there, I'm going to have to ask Paulie about that to make sure. But here we go. First round scheduled for 10 for the Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title, or Super Gallo, as they say in Spanish. Next Cecilia is in the dark blue trunks with the black trim with his last name on the back. And Cejas, undefeated 6-0. No, no, no wins by knockout in the purple with the white trim. Should be a very interesting fight to Sejas, his last fight. Pretty, very recently, back in December, a eighth round unanimous decision victory over Miguel Chilaver. No relation to Jose Luis, the legendary Paraguayan goalkeeper. Meanwhile, Cecilia, his last fight in November, first round knockout TKO over Diego Gonzalez. George, this is both men first 10 rounds out and not a lot of power between the two of them so we very well may see these guys go into the late rounds Cejas, all six of his wins have gone the distance Cecilia has six wins with three by knockout seven losses and one draw and early on Cejas in that white trim with the purple trunks flashing that uppercut This bout for the Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title is he worked there from Cecilia. Yeah, even with seven losses, Cecilia looks very polished. He definitely knows what he's doing in there, moving well laterally, picking his punches well early on here. Cecilia in his 15th professional bout. And Juan Cejas in his seventh fight. 120 pounds, 122 pounds, the obviously the super bantamweight limit. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page, Pro Box TV, and in Espanol también. Gotta know both. I think you said Cecilia's nickname is Picante, El but Picante, yep. Pesejas is, uh, is the spicy guy in there right now. He's, he's being very explosive, trying to be very aggressive, answers everything with, with big shots. And Cecilia has his last name on the back of his trunks, and on the front it says, Christ loves you. So that'll help to differentiate between the two fighters. Ooh. Good shot there from Seha. Big left hand over the top. So both fighters not afraid to exchange. 
powerfully here in this first round very early on. First of a scheduled 10 in the books. Pretty even first round, I would say. El Terrible Cejas against El Picante Sicilia. You gotta love the nicknames here of both of these fighters. Yeah, I like the I like the aggression of Cejas in that first round. Um, he was answering everything, landed that big left hand at the end of the round, which is probably gonna get him the round on my scorecard. That's that shot that is. I was talking about. Good overhand left, catches Cecilia right, right on the beak there. Cecilia took it well, and he's got a lot of experience. Stayed very composed in that round, but those big left hands were, were enough for me for to give the Sejas. And Cecilia's keys to victory. Control the middle of the ring. Keep your cool and start aggressively. He certainly did that yeah. in round one. All three of those. Meanwhile, for Sejas, maintain the distance. Use the left, as we saw in the first round, and good footwork. The keys to victory for El Terrible Sejas. Second round here in Cordoba at the... Club Union Electrica also, I guess in English you could translate it as to the Electric Workers Union Club. Raw, rough translation. Second round here in Sejas. You see Cecilia a little bit in the corner here. And you see Sejas, the way he starts out the round, he comes and meets his opponent right in the corner, backs him right up, controls the center, imposing that physical will early on. Sejas is used to fighting in different weight classes. He's fought as, as light as 116 and as heavy as 140 pounds. So wow. That's a big, that's a big range. Yeah. Super lightweight for Juan Gabriel Sejas. Oh, good lead uppercut Oof. there from Cecilia. It exchanges between both of these fighters inside Cecilia nice. with the left hand. And see, that's the experience that, you, that I mentioned about Cecilia early on. He's very composed. He picks his shots pretty well. He knows what he's doing in there. Nice shot selection and placement so far. Cecilia had ups and downs in his career. Ooh, nice body shot there from Sejas. Mm. Answers back Cecilia with the right hook, left hook, excuse me. One of the keys for Cecilia was in the middle of the ring, and that's what he's doing right now. Yep, he's firing back, staying in the center of the ring. Even though Sejas backed him up early on, Cecilia is making a stand here to get back to the center. Sejas trying to back Cecilia into the corner, but Cecilia punches his way out of it. And less than halfway through this second round. Good action so far between these two. 122. And we have an orthodox southpaw matchup here, Sejas being the southpaw. Cecilia, doesn't look, it looks like he's fought southpaws before, using that lead right hand to start his combinations and coming back with that left hook. And it looks like when they get, get into the clinch there, they get in real close quarters. Cecilia, as you mentioned, that experience, throws a couple shots, moves out. Ties his man up, spins. Yeah. Next step forward there with the one-two from Cecilia. Well, Ce Cecilia is the only guy with knockouts on his record here. Sejas looks to be the harder, more explosive puncher from what I'm seeing. There we see a nice left hand over the top of Sejas. Guard up in the body shot there from Sejas. A lot of aggression here in round two. Sejas continuing when he was started in the last round. Oh, nice little shots on the inside from Cecilia. Ooh, good combination there. Backing up Sejas. Strong Keep second round. Up. Strong second round there by Alexis Sicilia El Picante. This is first February 16th, our next edition of Wednesday Night Fights, but it's gonna be on a Friday because that Wednesday is Valentine's Day, so you know you gotta be with your your loved ones for that day. So Friday night fights, Cesar El Picasso and Ramon Cardenas, the main event. Pro Box TV event center. Chris, what are you looking forward to in that match between Picasso and Cardenas? You're going to be there with Paul and Mike Goldberg. Oh, man, this is this is a fantastic matchup. Ramon Cardenas is, is an excellent, excellent fighter. A lot of upside for him. Really looking forward to that matchup. And our Wednesday Night Fight Series is yeah. always fantastic. Mm -hmm. we, we try and outdo ourselves every two weeks, so make sure you, do, you tune Segundo, in. You don't want to miss it. Afuera. Last one with 
Uh, great knockout there by Angelo Leo. That devastating body <laughs> shot to Mike Planiat. I mean, we thought he broke his rib. That's how hard of a shot it was. Fantastic, fantastic fighter is Angelo Leo. This, our second appearance on Pro Box TV. I believe we'll be seeing him in a world title fight sooner than later. Ooh, nice right hand down the middle from Cecilia. Catches Sejas. Splits the guard. That's the best shot so far landed by Cecilia. Back comes Sejas with the power and aggression. Good body work there from Sejas. Ooh. Hard shots, both fighters. Yeah, they traded good shots there. I think Sejas got the better of it. It was a hard counter power jab over the top. I guess the southpaw is actually, uh, I'm sorry, I guess an orthodox fighter from the southpaw position, that's actually a great punch. Terrible Sejas in the purple trunks with the white trim. And Alexis Cecilia in the purple trunks and the black trim. And three of this scheduled 10 rounds for the Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title. It, 122 pounds, or for those that know kilograms or go do the metric system, 55.3 kilos. We'll put that out there as well. I always like the metric system easier. It's just multiples of 10, but I digress. I'm quite sure why we don't use it here either. Yeah. Think of it. Oh, oh good right, right, great hand. right hand. Pop right hand from Cecilia. George, that's what I meant. Cecilia knows what he's doing. Now. His record is deceiving. He's a, he's a much better fighter than his record suggests. Cecilia had, he's had up and downs in his career. He had a six fight losing streak between March 2016 and, 20, and September 2019. Then he went on a four fight winning streak from December 2019 to, to December 2021. So he's had ups and downs in his career, but he's coming off a first round TKO in his last fight in November. So figure he's figure he's starting to Resurrect his career and do well here. Left hand there by Sejas. Combination by Sicilia. Part of me wants to say Sicilia, because it's Italian, but. A lot of Italians in Argentina. Yeah. Sicilia. Our referee's another one. Yep. <laughs> Buon signore. <laughs> Going to the Ooh, body good in. body shot there. Technically, my mother's an Italian from Argentina, so oh, okay. she was born in Cordoba as well, where this fight is occurring right now. My last name's Roman, if that means anything. So, end of round three between Cejas and Cecilia. Now on Pro Box TV, we have the best, best fighters, including Delfimo Lopez. I got a kid, I got a kid, and I yeah. don't want my son to to deal with that. You know, if we don't fix this right now as adults and as men, then then where do we stand in, in the jury of God's eyes? Look, he gave you, he gave you, Paulie, a gift. He gave me a gift. And it's what we do with that gift that allows us to be much greater. We end up becoming either great or the greatest. And that's the that is the fine cue right there that puts the infinite sign. Mm. And it's like no one kind of quite understands it, but Teofimo does. And did I cry for four days before I signed this contract with Jermaine Ortiz? Freak, yes, I did. Yes, I did. You know why? Because I know what it's going to take for me to do this again. Winning the Sugar Ray Robinson Award at 23 years young. Only fought one time that year. COVID. The bubble. Lomachenko. Yep. Beat Richard Comey prior to that at 22 years young, winning my first world title where? In the Mecca of boxing. I am, mm -hmm. I am set in stone. It is set in stone for me to fix boxing. And I don't know where it's gonna take me, but I know that my main focus is February 8th. You put it all together in all perspective. This year is the year of the dragon, the year of the infinite. So we had at war. It's at war, man. And I know what you want to say, Paulie, and I'm on it with you, my man. And I know that if we both was on this, we we would chew up the boxing world like it was uh well, like it was some breakfast. Teofimo Lopez, that big fight coming up, Super Bowl week against Jermaine Ortiz. The takeover against the technician. That should be a great fight. Looking forward to seeing how that fight 
plays out and then obviously the outcome as well is back here at the Club Union Electrica in Cordoba in Argentina. Special presentation of Pro Box TV in association with Samson Boxing and Theo Box as Alexis Sicilia finds himself in a battle here against Juan Cejas for the Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title. So we are just about to start the fourth round here in Cordoba. And the first three rounds have been very action-packed with both fighters landing some big-time shots. Let's see how the rest of this fight progresses. As Alexis Cecilia in the purple trunks with the black trim with his last name on the back at the belt line and Cejas in the purple and white. Cecilia going to the body and then after going up top. First time that Cecilia has been in the fight schedule for 10 rounds. And the same for Cejas. Both men here exchanging body shots in round four. Cejas landed a nice left hook off that rear hand to the liver side of Cecilia. And Cecilia came right back with a couple of his own. A lot of times when you see a guy respond to a body shot with body shots, it means he felt it. Ooh, Ooh and there is a knockdown for Cejas. I think, Chris, that was a body shot there that took him down. I, honestly, I think that landed on the arms and it was more of a balance shot because even Cecilia looks very surprised that the ref gave him a count there. So the first, I guess you could say, major development in this fight is Sejas scores a Good left hand upstairs there from Sejas. You see Cecilia now not moving around as much, standing his ground. Here, trying to respond to that knockdown. He's got to understand scoring-wise, that's a really bad place to be. So he doesn't want to give up a two-point round here. Less than halfway through the fourth round, and we've had a knockdown. A surprise to see here, and then say has good, good work inside. Good, good response there from Cecilia. And Cecilia almost never, at least from what I've seen so far, almost never throws just one punch. He's throwing multiple punches, some combinations there. Hey, I mentioned that in round one, I can really see he's got nice punch selection, changes things up, definitely knows how to fight a southpaw. But here comes Sejas, who's just, with all that aggression, he's a very difficult guy to deal with if you don't have big power. And Cecilia certainly doesn't seem like he's a power puncher. To me, Cecilia kind of leaning in a little bit, leaning over, bending over at the, at the waist. He was doing that earlier. He's actually trying to bait Sejas in so he can counter with combinations. Like you said, George, he doesn't throw one punch at a time, or Sejas tends to. So he'll throw the single jab, and Cecilia is looking to count over that with multiple punches like that. See that? He's baiting him in. And there's that lead uppercut. Sejas going to consistently take the bait. That's the, the question. That's the tactic, the strategy here. An eventful fourth round here in Cordoba. Unfortunately for Cecilia, that was probably his best round. But with that knockdown, it's going to be really difficult to give him that round or give him even Get Friday night fights here on Pro Box TV, presented by SportsBetting.ag, the official online betting sponsor of Wednesday night fights, which will take place on the 16th on a Friday. Wednesday is Valentine's Day. Main event: Israel Picasso of Mexico against the American Ramon Cardenas. That should be a great one from the Pro Box TV Event Center in Plant City, Florida. Ten rounds, super bantamweight. It begins 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Ciudad de México, 5 p.m. Pacific. Apura. Here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel you can watch it on the app but we want you to watch on youtube so subscribe on our youtube channel we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers oh. round number five here in cordoba of a schedule 10. juan cejas against alexis sicilia for the argentine federation super bantamweight championship Ooh, nice exchanges here to start round five Sejas, or excuse me, Alexis Cecilia suffering a knockdown in the previous round. Sejas might want to take advantage of that and build off of that knockdown and the round going in his favor on the judges' scorecards. 
Yeah, Sejas is expanding his lead on my scorecard. That knockdown is cementing him as being ahead halfway through the fight. But Cecilia, man, he comes right back. He throws nice combinations. You can tell he's got his timing down pretty well from the last round into here. He feels comfortable with that lateral movement, his combination punching. But he just can't match the output and explosiveness of Stejas thus far. It's one thing about that I've learned in, in the time that I've been here at Pro Box TV that the lower weights, maybe they don't have the, the knockout ratios, but they still drop bombs on each other. And some powerful, powerful fighters. Let's see if maybe Sejas, if he can work it to get his first knockout victory of his career. We'll see. Good boxing on both ends. There's Sejas with the lead left. See that dancing and moving? There's that lateral movement you talked about, Chris. Firing off that movement, dropping dropping that right hand, getting his head offline. Again, I mentioned that no set of fights outpaws. You're seeing that more and more as he's able to avoid a lot of the big shots from Sejas and land some of his own. Give credit to Cecilia in this round. He's shown an elusiveness. Oh, straight right hand there. Yeah, I had mentioned the last round was one of his best rounds of the fight, but you know, with that knockdown being scored against him, Really unfortunate for him, but he's looking pretty good here in round five as well. So oftentimes boxers when they get knocked down, it's like they they feel like they have to to step up and just elevate their intensity because they, to overcome that score. Absolutely you gotta get that back. Yeah. I mean that, that one point is big. It's not just one point, it's basically an entire round that you're giving away. So you need to get that that point back. It's very difficult to do. You can tell Cecilia, he's not moving as much. He's standing his ground more. He's throwing his hands. He knows that he's in a hole here. He needs to try and get that back best he can. Good it's round. A, it's almost as if you have, if you get knocked down in one round, you need to win the next two to make up for it. Well, Absolutely. mathematically, you do. Yeah. That's the way scoring is. So let's take a in between rounds here as we are approaching round number six. Let's take a look at my favorite show on Pro Box TV sparring sessions. Rolly Merrill's much, I think, I, I would agree he's much better than I think he shows, but he's just so wild and he's so, I mean, listen, the personality a lot of times you got outside the ring is the way you are inside the ring. And I think he's so wild-minded outside of the ring. It carries over into his style and, his, and, and the way that he fights. He, he gets ahead of his skis, so to speak, and I think there will be opportunities for Cruz, especially later on, to build and break down uh, uh, Rolly as, as we go in the fight. I just think he's been there before. He's got more experience. He's durable. He's more durable. And I think he's got that dogged mentality. His name is Pitbull for a reason. He comes forward. He, once he gets those jaws on you, he's going to lock in. I see him locking in on Romero and taking him deep into deep waters and drowning him. This isn't deep waters, but that, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm picturing from Pitbull. What, 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 what is this? Just because your name is Pitbull, you're going to close, close jaws and everything else. Where, where's the breakdown? There's no way. No, Rolly's going to win this fight. Breakdown. Rolly has a dog in him as well. He, he fights. We've seen him even before. Look, so everybody remembers the Javante Davis fight where he was winning and then he got knocked out. But he, he had some decent wins before that as well. Yes, he's hot and cold. But this is a guy who presses you, but he comes in the front door when Pitbull Cruz. He, you, you can, he can be picked off. He can be hit on the way, on, on the way inside. He's going to land his own shots, of course. But both guys go back and forth here. I think I think Rolly's pretty durable, regardless of the knockout loss he faced. Break. Rolly is only is a bully. He's only pressing you when he's in control. The Marinas fight. I was there for that fight. The guy did not. He didn't win that fight either. Yeah, sparring hey, sessions. Who is it? You are you the the, the, the reigning champion? Currently, yes. Cur okay. Currently, I had, a, I, had a, I had a big I had a big win last big week. Big win last week. <laughs> Probably looked like a chef with that outfit that he was wearing in that one there. <laughs> The Italian him, chef. The Italian chef. That could, that could be a sparring session nickname. Yes. <laughs> trying to cook up another win. Yeah, for sure. Definitely want to check out sparring sessions here at Pro Box TV. It is always big fun when Chris and Pauly get into the gym. Very, very fun. That's yeah. Very, we, have, we have a lot of fun at sparring session days. Oh, yeah. I like it when, when Pauly loses and he's like, I'm going to the commission. And <laughs> that's the he best. does that when he wins, too. <laughs> he does it when he wins, too. Yep. <laughs> Makes it even better. George Jakovic with the full time looking smooth. All right. Back here in Cordoba, round number six. Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title fight between Juan Sejas in the purple and white trunks. Or purple trunks with the white trim, I should say, and Alexis Cecilia in the purple and black. 
Seha scoring a knockdown in the fourth round, and Cecilia has been trying to kind of fight his way back, at least in, in our impression, fight his way back on the scorecard. The judges. Yeah, I had given Cecilia the last round and the round before that, but that round before that with the knockdown, they made that an even round. So I have Sejas up by quite a few rounds at this point. And Sejas undefeated, 6-0 and with no victories by knockouts. His last five fights have gone, well, his last five fights he has won by unanimous decision, doing some good body work there on the ropes. Yeah, I have a 3-1-1 one, one even for Sejas. Cecilia trying to fight his way back. Searching, trying to connect with that right hand, Sejas. Nice combination from Sejas. Pin Cecilia against the ropes, lets those hands go. Head and body, here he comes. Best exchange for Sejas in the fight so far. Oof, good body shot as well. Cecilia trying to come back, but... Doing a little more holding than punching. And this is Cecilia, native of, of Santa Fe, which is the... Oh! Sejas is really looking to take his head off with that left hand. Yeah, I think he, you know, his corner probably told him, hey, listen, you lost that last round. Don't let this guy get comfortable. Get back out there with the big shots. And Sejas said, okay, I can do that. Round six. Oh! Ooh. Best shot of the punch of the fight so far from Sejas over the top with that left hand. That left hand is starting to connect. Or at least he's feeling more confident in, in letting it go and throwing, putting some power behind it. El terrible Sejas. Yeah, in, in a strict boxing match, I, I think Cecilia has more skills, but when it comes to being explosive and powerful, being aggressive, Sejas is on a different level. Cecilia now with the combination to the body. Sejas actually traveling south for this one. He's from Salta, which is the one of the northern provinces of Argentina. So he came south to this one in Sicilia's from Santa Fe, which is the neighboring province to the east of Cordoba. I'm a geography nerd, so I gotta throw that out there. Yes, with the right hand. It's a combination by Sicilia toward the end of this sixth round. Sejas definitely delivering some powerful blows here in this sixth round. And this will be the first time in Cecilia's career that he will go past six rounds. And the keys to victory for Cecilia, control the middle of the ring, keep your cool, and start aggressively. Well, I don't know if he's done. Well, he's kept his cool for sure. Definitely kept his goal, yeah. cool. Uh, not enough aggression, certainly not. Yeah. And with Sejas, maintaining the distance, I don't think that's that's what he should do at all. I think he should be in the grill of Cecilia. Definitely use that left hand. That's he's doing that well. And the footwork, he's doing a good job, especially the last round, cutting off the ring and making sure he is close enough to Cecilia so it's not a boxing match or a fight. So for Alexis Cecilia, El Picante, as his nickname is, this is the first time in his career that he's gone past six rounds. I don't think conditioning will be a problem, but we shall see. The right hand just missing there by Cecilia. The first of three fights here on Pro Box TV. This special presentation from Cordoba in Argentina in association with Samson Boxing and Theo Box. And there's a couple of another undefeated Argentine boxer. Steps into the ring after this one with Nicolas Vergara. Yeah, good shots again. There's that left hand with Sejas. Sejas is doing his best work when he has Cecilia pinned against the ropes. We're starting to see, I think, the conditioning of both men here. I had mentioned that this is their first 10-rounder for both of them. But Sejas has been more rounds in the past. I think I believe he's been eight at least once before. Yep. Cecilia has not. Starting to see that experience show through. Last two fights for Sejas has gone, have gone the distance, and there were eight rounders, including his last fight, obviously, against uh, Miguel Chilaveret. Sejas has never fought outside of Argentina, so if he can continue to progress, maybe he'll start to get the... Ooh, vicious uppercut there with the right there by Sejas. 
and this is also Cecilia's first time going past six rounds. Yep. So you're starting to see it a little bit in the conditioning. That unknown always wears on a fighter. If you've never been there, it's hard to know how you're going to react. And in the sparring and in training camp really doesn't prepare you for the actual, or how much does it prepare you for the it's, actual? It's never the same, um, just because it's more of a mental thing than anything. Mm. If you can do it in the gym, you can do it on fight night. But it's still, that, that unknown can really wear on a young fighter. Jose has 29 years of age, CBF 30 years of age. Still a lot of boxing in the, the future for both of these guys. Less than a minute remaining here in this seventh round. The schedule 10. First of three big fights here on Pro Box TV, this special presentation. All three fights featuring undefeated Argentine fighters. This one with Sejas in the purple and white. And mm, nice lead uppercut there from Cecilia Lance. Flush. Showing a burst of energy there. Yeah. Cecilia with that left hand. Sejas is having a great two and a half minutes, but Cecilia is coming back here. The last 30 seconds trying to steal the round. Oh, that right hand there Ooh, by Sejas. Good body shot. Body shot as well. Cecilia responds with the combination. Last 30 seconds trying to pull a Sugar Ray Leonard against Hagler. Like the <laughs> turn it on in the last 30 seconds if my memory serves. Well, Cecilia survives the seventh round into uncharted territory for the fighter from Santa Fe. There was that lead uppercut that caught Sejas. That had a little Oof. bit of effect on him there. Good shot. Cecilia didn't do much that round beyond that, but that was a beautiful shot. Maybe one of the best shots of uh, punches of the fight so far. Round number eight here in Cordoba. Schedule 10. After this fight, Nicolás Vergara undefeated. 6-0, five by knockout. Taking on the Panamanian Gerardo Murillo. At 126 for the WBO, WBA for the Latin featherweight title. And in the main event, Neri Romero against Miguel Mejia. Argentina versus Mexico in that encounter. At 130, it's super featherweight for the WBO Latino title. Still have a couple more rounds left here. As Juan Sejas looking to go to 7-0. You have to give Cecilia, Alexis Cecilia credit. He has stood in there and on toe for toe with El Terrible Sejas. Cecilia is allowing Sejas to walk in the front door. He's not throwing enough punches from the outside. And Sejas wants to be inside, like I mentioned earlier. He does well when Cecilia's back is against the ropes and his feet are set. Cecilia, when he's got that lateral movement like this, and he's able to fire off that, does really well. But he's allowing Sejas to just walk him down and putting a lot of physical pressure on him. And one of the keys was to stay in the middle of the ring there, but Sejas just seems to be too strong. Yeah. Sejas now get the feeling, and maybe his corner has told him, all right, you, you, you might have this. You want to secure the next couple of rounds just to make sure you have this fight won. I will say about Sejas, his, his conditioning is impressive. He has not pulled off the gas pedal at all. Could also be the strength of those body shots. He's been catching Cecilia with those quite a bit the last few rounds. That, that could really sap your gas tank, take your conditioning away. Because Cecilia is being less and less active as this fight wears on. Ooh, good left hand by Sejas, followed by the right. There's a combination, and he's got Cecilia in trouble on the ropes here in the eighth. Cecilia in the clinch, grabs, comes out of it. That's veteran boxing experience right there. Yeah, Sejas is looking to drown Cecilia, and Cecilia right there looked Looked like he was getting a little bit overwhelmed. And like you said, use that experience to clinch, break the action. Ooh, Ooh. Uppercut. One thing, Cecilia is not shy about throwing that uppercut, that's for sure. 
Well, it's, when you look at Sejas' body language, he's so forward, he's heavy over that front foot. You can see it right there. He's got that lead, that, that head over that lead foot. Makes you a, a sucker for the uppercut. Remember earlier in the fight, I, we were talking about how Cecilia was maybe leaning over to try and bait Sejas? Yeah, well, Sejas doesn't have that head movement right. <laughs> like Cecilia does. Right. I was going to ask you, is that the same philosophy, same thinking there? But No, he's just yeah. he's just an aggressive guy being using his forward momentum and trying to be heavy on that front foot so he can land that lead, that lead right. And Cecilia moving and dancing a little bit here, trying to avoid Sejas here toward the end of the eighth round. That flurry on the ropes there earlier in this round. Appears to be enough to give Sejas the round. And ooh, just missed on the uppercut before the bell. The good round for Sejas. Cecilia has his moments, but Cecilia, uh, uh, excuse me, Seha is landing the heavier punches of the two. Sejas have been more consistent in terms of his, his accuracy there. And I, th there you see exactly what I was saying. Yep. So Cecilia lands a nice power jab off of the right hand, but then Sejas comes right back with bigger shots. They seem to have more of an effect on Cecilia. So. You got to think not only is it effective aggression, but also what, what those punches are doing damage wise. Say, Hasi, I figure he's going to be figuring he's in the lead on the scorecards, but he's got to finish this fight strong. You see, Cecilia, even though Cecilia has been moving laterally pretty well, the, the volume of punches has decreased for sure. You never know what kind of you know what kind of judges you have. So, yeah. You know, the judges are paying really close attention. They might like the boxing ability of Cecilia from the outside, those little counter punches that he's throwing. Or if the, uh, the judges like the aggression of Sejas, then it, it's going to be an easier fight to score. But you never you never can tell. It's his boxing. Round number nine here in Cordoba at the Union Electrica. Left hand coming through for Sejas. Trying to go to 7 and 0. Being undefeated in his young career. Meanwhile, Alexis Cecilia. Oh, big overhand left from Sejas. Catches Cecilia as they're trading. Little jab there by Cecilia. He's trying to see if he can move, get out of the ropes there. Into the corner. Trying not to get pinned down. And Sejas backs off. Cecilia, with the, if he can pull off a victory here, will essentially move his record to 500. He came into this fight, six wins, seven losses, one draw. Three wins by knockout. Oh! Sejas. Oh, another good shot. Yeah, Sejas is really starting to separate himself as these rounds wear on. Sejas Ooh, good body shot, that hurt. That hurt Cecilia. The hands dropping a little bit from Cecilia. Oh, Cecilia still keeps throwing those combinations there. Yeah, at this point, though, it seems like he's throwing the shot just to keep Sejas off him rather than trying to win, win the moments. I think he's still feeling that body shot, that left hand down low. That's that liver side. Oh, Ooh. boy, big shots from Sejas along the ropes once again. Angles that oh. uppercut. Then the hook. Oh, by the right hand. The right hand is starting to land here by Sejas. Cecilia staying in the pocket there. Oh, sustained attack from Sejas here in round number nine. Let's see if he has enough in the gas tank to push for a finish. It would be his first. He does he is not have any knockouts to date. And Sejas, you can see those eyes looking in, just trying to find the opening here. Yeah. yeah, Cecilia just looks tired. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing. I was gonna say looks maybe he's, he's looking very fatigued at this fatigued, point. Yeah. His punches don't have the same same speed or snap they, they had a few rounds ago. Kind of pushing them out with arm punches. Whereas Sejas punching with the same velocity and strength as he was early on. Cecilia now. This is the furthest he's gone in his professional career. Barring a knockout here in these last few seconds. We are going to have a 10th round here in Cordoba between Alexis Sicilia and Juan Gabriel Sejas. Yeah, both men entering uncharted territory. Yeah. Yeah, first fight 
scheduled for 10 rounds for both fighters. And don't forget, February 16th, our next edition of, well, Wednesday Night Fights, but it's going to be Friday Night Fights. Israel Picasso against Ramon Cardenas is the main event from the Pro Box TV Event Center in Plant City, Florida. Check it out on our app and also on YouTube as well. By the way, the fights are entertaining, but the comments during the fights are just as entertaining. <laughs> so you want to watch the fights, but you want to watch the comments as well. You get the full, let me tell you, the comments are unbelievable. We'll put it that way. The, the last fight we had, the McCombie Pearson fight, my goodness. It was funnier than anything Dave Chappelle could say. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> and the fight was pretty good as well. Mutual respect here in the 10th and final round of this Argentine Federation Super Bantamweight title fight between Juan Cejas in the purple and white and Alexis Sicilia in the purple and black. Good start here for Cejas, who knocked down Sicilia in the fourth round. Sicilia now. Nation and Sejas with that right hand. I figure Cecilia at this point needs a huge round here. Pull off a victory. We'll see. He needs a knockout on my score. Card. Yeah, I agree. I got I got Sejas up quite a few rounds, and he got that knockdown to add to it. Sejas has really been pouring it on these second the second half of the fight. Ooh. Ooh. Combination. combination just like this. Good body shot in that combination. Well, then they'll see you in the clinch there. There's that experience. And close. But those are all arm punches. Those aren't the kind of shots that are really going to have too much of an effect, especially with a guy that's a Cecilia who's not a heavy handed guy. Sejas complaining about the hands to the back of the head. Archer better be have hit you with those shots on the inside. It's a different thing. Yeah. But <laughs> Cecilia, not so much. Better be have with that huge, undisputed light heavyweight title fight in Saudi Arabia on the, the 1st of June against Dimitri Vivo. I'm sure we're going to have a Deep Waters, a big fight preview. Oh, yeah. All of it. All of it. Man, that's, that's going to be a good fight. It's one of the biggest fights that we made in boxing today. Yeah. That's, you have to give the Saudis credit because that's two weeks after the undisputed heavyweight between Fury and Usyk on, what, May 18th? So... His Excellency likes to uh, go big or go home. Yes. I don't blame him. He's, he's making it happen. And less than a minute remaining here in this fight. And Sejas. Looking Still, to close out this fight. You see Sejas keeping up with that pressure, Ooh. pulling forward, throwing big shots down the stretch, making sure he secures these rounds so there's no question come decision time. Searching there, looking for that opening there. Cecilia looks like he's going to survive and go the distance in his first foray past six rounds. Same could be said for Sejas. His first foray past eight rounds is. Good combinations here for Ooh. Sejas. I think that's been Se the most impressive thing from Sejas tonight has been his conditioning. Yeah. The fact that he has been able to sustain his pace and throw these big shots deep into the fight. First time fighting 10 rounds is impressive. So both fighters go the distance in their first ever fight schedule for 10 rounds. Mutual respect for these two as Juan Gabriel Oscar Cejas of Salta and Alexis Sicilia. Make it to 10 rounds. And don't forget, February 16th, Friday Night Fights, two days after Valentine's Day. Israel Picasso and Ramon Cardenas, the main event. Pro Box TV. Check it out on YouTube. On Pro Box TV and Pro Box TV Espanol as well. Ricardo Celis and Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. Take a look at some of the best action from this fight. It was a good back and forth fight. These guys landed some good. Good punches between the two of them. Not much power in either man, but it was a sustained attack from Sejas for me that was really the difference. Here we see that knockdown, which was questionable. Yeah. Uh, you you, know, you got to score it, but it seems like he got caught on his heels, a little bit off balance. Didn't seem to be hurt by it. He actually fought well after that. Yeah. Did.
Cecilia. But again, the, the, the same sustained attack and the conditioning of Sejas was really the, the difference. After round five, it was all Sejas coming forward, landing combinations along the ropes. The bigger, harder punches were landed by him. I would be surprised if Sejas is not the is not victorious tonight. Yeah, the power punch is definitely going in favor of Sejas and Cecilia. It had his moments with the combinations and everything, but as you mentioned, after the knockout, a knockdown, I should say, in the fourth round. It's really Sejas. Let's see. Unanimous decision. Enrique Ferrero, 99. Enrique Ferrero says no, 99-90. Jorge González, 100 to 89. And Fernando Caruncho, 98-91. And his decision. Campeón argentino de los super gallos. The super featherweight Argentine champion. Juan, el terrible. Juan Gabriel Cejas wins it. And I don't think there's any surprise with uh, that decision there. No, I had a 98-91 agreeing with that third judge as well. And so Juan Cejas is now the Argentine Federation super bantamweight champion. Well, we heard from Teofilo or Teofimo Lopez earlier. Let's hear from his opponent during Super Bowl week, Jermaine Ortiz. In the sense of the ring IQ and other things that we bring into the game, into the ring of power and speed is gonna be different. And, but what he says about fighting other fighters, it doesn't matter to me because I'm focused on him. I'm not focused on what he's doing, what he's saying, with the, you know, I'm focused on February 8th in my job after the Olympic trials and like the Olympic years, when whoever went to the Olympics, I'm like, all right, so I'm gonna see these guys again. Everybody who I found the Olympic trials and the people who went to the Olympics, that's who I said I was gonna see again. Um, Both, but I'm always willing to fight everybody. I wanna prove that I'm the best and the easiest way to do that is to beat the best and fight the best. And, pres and whoever's in front of me, just beat them. And it doesn't matter if it's tough or not. It's just how my journey goes, and it's for better storytelling. No, I prefer Teofimo because right now he's the one with, with two titles, the WBO and the Ring Magazine. And like I said, uh, he's probably the best at 140 right now. So what what not other better opponent than to take the one who's the best one at 140? I think, man, it's a great week. It's going to be one that I'm going to remember forever. The biggest event in the United States. And being able to fight for my first world title Thursday night, Sunday's football. It's going to be a great week, and I'm excited. Yeah, Super Bowl week, what a great way to start the week, or at least get you going for the Super Bowl with Lopez against Ortiz. All right, main event here, it is Neri Ariel Cruz Romero against Miguel Mejia. That will be for the WBO Latino Super Featherweight title. And the co-main coming up next, Nicolas Vergara. Another Argentine that is undefeated, 6-0, will be looking to take down Gerardo Murillo of Panama. We look at the tail of the tape, and impressive records for both men, but especially Vergara, 6-0 with five knockouts, and the reach advantage for Gerardo Murillo. This should be an interesting fight at 126 between these two fighters. Here is the official fighter presentation. Una derrota, un empate, dos ganadas antes del límite para el hombre que viene de Barrio Alto del Romeral en la ciudad de Panamá, el Pica Pica, Gerardo Pica Pica Muricho. Invicto el hombre de Cosquín, Córdoba, Argentina. El príncipe. Fighting at home here, Agustín. Córdoba. Nas Agustin Vergara, the referee Julio Cesar Gomez. This fight scheduled for 10 rounds for the WBA Fede Latin featherweight title. And the Panamanian Pica Pica Murillo in the green trunks. And the Argentine fighting in his hometown or his home province, I should say, is Vergara El Principito. He is in the black with the red. If we go by records, Vergara is going to be the power puncher in yep. this matchup. 
I need you guys a little more fights. 10-1-1, one, one, but he only has two knockouts in those 10 wins, so. Yeah. One would assume Vegata is the power puncher, and from what I see so far, it certainly looks that way. Yeah, Vegata starting off strong here. His last fight back in March of 2023, so it's been a almost a year layoff for him. In this building, he won over Jose Alberto Arias, a ninth round knockout. But that was at 122 at super bantamweight, so he's moving up weight class for this fight. Juan Murillo, interesting story as to why he hasn't fought in almost three years. That was a loss to Angel Barrio in Colombia in six rounds by unanimous decision. But Murillo, the Panamanian in green, took three years off from boxing to get his degree in journalism from the University of Panama. So long layoff for him. That's impressive. Good for him. Yeah. It was good to have a life outside of boxing. Yeah, definitely. Periodismo. This is a hard way to make a living. Yeah, sure is. His first fight against the heavy hitter in Vergara. Mario, yeah. man, he needs to be careful. He's got his chin way up in the air when he throws those combinations. Seems like he's a pretty tall guy for the weight class. Fighting tall, but also you got you to gotta close that distance between the shoulder and the chin. Otherwise, it's an inviting target for shots like that. Vergara walking him down here with less than a minute here in this first round. Vergara also part of the Argentine national team as well. Jab there by Murillo in the corner. Just the escape. And plenty pito. The little Prince. There is any hope for Murillo, it's the fact that Vergara has been knocked down in the first round before, twice. And he has gone up every time to win, so. I mean, I can see that. Vergara, he's not using the jab very much. He's coming forward with big, with just power punches. There we see a jab. So Murillo boxing out of that one. There's the nice right hand. That was, that was the shot that I was concerned about for Murillo because he's coming in with his chin up in the air, especially when he's throwing combinations. He got him found, he found it. End of the first round. And you have to get, I guess Vergara have, you have to see Vergara just be on pure aggression there, kind of taking to the fight, taking the fight to Murillo. And the strength that right hand right there at the end of the round. That was, that was a good shot. So keys to the victory here for Vergara. Constant pressure using the fakes and counter shots for Vergara. And for Murillo. And yeah, keys to victory, break his rhythm, hit from all angles, and body shots for Pica Pica Murillo of Panama. Murillo is going to throw body shots. He's going to need to get low. Because that last yeah. round, he was throwing a lot of combinations with his chin way up in the air, standing far too tall to be getting down there to the body. Because whenever you go to the body, you leave your chin open. Your, your hands are leaving your guard. And you're exposing yourself. So in order to throw combinations to the body, you gotta look in your knees and get low. Second round here for the WBA Fede Latin featherweight title here in Cordoba. The Cordoba native Her Nicolas Vergara in the black trunks. And the Panamanian Gerardo Murillo in the green and black. Principito against Pica Pica. You gotta like the nicknames of the fighters you've had so far here. Yeah, so far so good. You got El Terrible, El Picante. Yeah. I like the, El Picante. Yeah, Picante is a good one. Now we gotta go into the body a little bit here in the second round. Right hand over the top. Rio on the ropes. You can see Vergara is not only the better puncher, but he's physically stronger. He's able to impose his size and strength on Murillo whenever they get close. Murillo, hands down, chin open, chin up, as you mentioned, Chris. Leaving himself exposed. Jab there by Murillo. But also, even when he's jabbing, that, that right hand, it's, it's almost like a bow and arrow type position. He doesn't really leave it in position for defense. Good Ooh. counter there from Murillo up the ropes, bounces with a straight right hand. Pitches Vergara as he comes in. Vergara goes to the body there. 
Then he's got Murillo in the corner. Murillo ties him up. And some power punches here from Vergara. Good flurry, and he wrestles him to the ground here. That's definitely not a knockdown. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, that, that physicality from Vergara. He's a stronger guy on the inside, too, but just move Murillo around. Here we see it again. There's a body shot there, and Murillo... Oh, no, they're going to... Call it a slip that, that, here. That, that could have been called a knockdown, honestly. Yeah. He, got hit on the end of a, he went down on the end of a bottom oh. punch to the body. Left hand. Oh, the left hand, a couple of left hands there by Vergara. Yeah, Vergara's just bugging him at this point. Oh, oh that left hand rocked Murillo. He goes down. Shot. Left on the inside. He is up before the count of eight from the referee Julio Cesar Gomez. And now Vergara again on the ropes. Mirillo is in trouble, and the referee stops the fight in the second round. And Nicolas Vergara improves to 7 0, 6 by knockout. The referee Julio Cesar Gomez has seen enough, and Nicolas Vergara picking up an impressive victory here in Cordoba in his home province. I mean, the writing was on the wall. That was a little premature for yeah. my liking. I would like to see a little more action, give Murillo a little more of a shot. But yeah, like I said, the writing was on the wall. Vergara was just physically too strong, too aggressive, hitting too hard. So let's take a look at the best action of a very quick fight. It's this. The left hands here from Vergara. Oof. Yeah, I mentioned that he's mugging yep. Murillo out there. He's just, he's too physical. On the inside, he's just throwing the power shots to both hands, throwing him down, wrestling him to the ground, to the canvas. That happened three or four times. And then finally, it was a, a, he switched it up with a, yeah, that was, I could have, I, I could have yeah, easily seen that as a knockdown off it, that body shot. But it was that oof. punch right there. It was a left uppercut. Vergara has switched him up. He's throwing left hands, throw left hooks to the body, to the body, to the head, and then he switched up and threw an uppercut. And Murillo, he was bent over, took that shot heavy on the chin, went down, didn't seem to recover too well. Ref saw that, stepped in, stopped the fight. So good mutual respect being shown by the two fighters there, and Nicolás Vergara, 24 years of age. Six KOs now yeah. and seven wins. Good looking record. So the, here is the official decision. No count technical. Technical knockout. 246 in the second round. Campeón fue de Latin de la categoría pluma. De la asociación de Latin featherweight to pluma, as they say in Spanish, champion. Argentina. Agustín, el principito. Bergano. Agustin Vergara improves to 7 0, 6 by knockout. And well done for him. And we will see what happens with his future. And before we get to the main event, we have Teddy Atlas joining us on Pro Box TV for Who's the Man to Talk About Canelo Alvarez's place in his weight, weight class? Yeah, I got Benavides as my number two. Though, nonetheless, I still have Canelo as my number one, and we can go into that later. Obviously, the cat's out of the bag as to why, why uh, Benavidez is number two is because he doesn't have the titles. Um, so I'll go into more of the Canelo stuff when it comes to Canelo, the time to talk about number one. As far as Benavidez, I think he's been not only phenomenal, he's getting better, he's, he's getting more and more impressive. He's, um, he's just a, a, a monster in every way. You know, he, he's got that nickname, and, and it's starting to apply more and more and more. He's just had a dominant year. Uh, where he's probably the one of the high contenders for fighter of the year in 2023, wins over Caleb Plant and Demetrius Andrade, which are two phenomenal wins over two phenomenal fighters. Um, I think the way he did that, and not just in getting those wins, and the yeah. way he got those wins is really what solidifies him as such a strong candidate here, you know, and, and what puts him ahead of Morrell as well, because again, he's undefeated, Morrell's undefeated, but he just has that body of work a little bit more just based on professional experience. But I think Morrell and Benavides would also be head-to-head, -head, a monster matchup. Uh, but I, I got right now, I got Benavides 
strongly based on this 2023. He is he has got a lot of momentum flying towards number one, and uh, we'll get into I'll get into the the whole scenario and situation with that, and I'll talk a little bit more on your heartstrings, blowhards, when we talk about number one. Another great show here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel, and of course. The centerpiece, I guess you could say, of ProBox TV programming is the live fights. And we don't have Wednesday night fights on February 14th because that's Valentine's Day. But we have Friday night fights, and it's going to be a good one from the ProBox TV event center in Plant City, Florida. Israel Picasso against Ramon Cardenas, the main event. That is going to be a good one. Speaking of main event here, let's get to this one in Cordoba as Neri Ariel Cruz Romero will be going up against Miguel Mejia for the vacant WBO Latino Super Featherweight title. We've seen two undefeated Argentines improve their records and remain undefeated. Will that be the same for Neri Romero? El Maldito is his nickname as he goes up against the Mexican, the 38-year-old veteran in Miguel Mejia. Should be an interesting fight here from Cordoba. A couple of fighters that have good experience, 35 and 38 years of age, respectively. George Dimatelis alongside former two-discipline world champion Chris Algieri. And thank you for joining us here on this special pre special presentation of ProBox TV in association, in collaboration with Samson Boxing and Teo Box. Espresso, special, special. I, I, I get them all confused. But we are ready for the main event. This should be a good one because Romero has fought on some under, big undercards under some big fights. He has experience outside of Argentina. Fought a couple of times or four times in the United States and California and once in Panama. And he's coming off of the eighth round TKO for the Mexico. The Mexican fighters are always very tough. Always a great fight when you match up Mexicans and Argentinians. There's a lot of pride when it comes to these types of matchups. So, Bravis is the nickname of Miguel Mejia. He's a maldito. Romero, eighth round TKO back in August of 2022, his last fight. Him his last fight, June of last year. Fifth round TKO victory over Carlos Ocampo in Guasuave, Mexico. And Carlos uh, Gustavo Tomas is the referee in charge. This one. This should be a good one here. Again, Mejia, 21 wins, three losses, one draw, seven wins by way of knockout. And Romero, 16 0 and 0. Nine wins by way of knockout. Romero in the blue and gold trunks, and the Mexican in the black trunks with the colors of the Mexican flag, the native of Tijuana. TJ. TJ. Always tough guys out of TJ. Think of the great Eric Ter El Terrible Morales. Any fighter out of. Mexico. I had fun with my boys when I went to TJ, but that's a different story. Yeah. Uh, unusual delivery from Mejia when it comes to his right hand there, right, Chris? It's, yeah, it's very choppy. Yeah. Is that natural, or is that something maybe he's, he just... Adopted for this Very fight in training camp. Interesting way to throw a punch. I mean, yeah, you, you're not going to land on the knuckles on that. If you can hit more with your fingers, very tough to generate power with that kind of punch unless you land it perfectly on the chin and you're able to turn the knuckles over. Doesn't seem like he's making a fist either. Yeah. So, ooh, nice double left hook there from Romero. Dig to the body, came back upstairs. Nice Ooh. uppercut. Splits the guard of Mejia. There's the left hand there of Romero. 35 years of age, native of Buenos Aires. Romero seems to have a very educated left hand. He's mixing it up very nicely. Upstairs, downstairs, coming up the middle with it. Decent jab as well. There he gets countered over the top from that chopping right hand. Romero being very aggressive with that left hand here in his first first round. He's, he's spotting something there. I guess that unusual movement of the right hand of Mejia maybe opens things up for the left of Romero. And 
he had coming into this fight. He's won four of his last five, two by decision and two by technical knockout. Yeah, Romero is definitely more of a left-handed fighter. He's throwing that three, four times as much as he is the right here in round one. Yeah, trying to get inside this Romero countering and that unusual, that awkward overhand yeah, over the right top, yeah. chopping, hit with the fingers type punch from Mejia. Have you ever seen anything like that before? I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. That's just no, it's uh, it, it doesn't look like a dangerous punch whatsoever. Right. And again, it, even looking at his gloves, it doesn't look like he's he's balling up his fist. I wonder if he has an injury to that hand. It seems like it's just held in position. Mm, interesting to see how that will continue to play out here in this fight for Bravis Miguel Mejia. It's going to be hard to get respect without balling up your fist. Is the keys of victory for Mejia. Control the distance, remain calm, and get a quick start. Especially when you consider he is the, the visitor, for lack of a better term. Trying to get a quick start to against the judges here. Interesting to see if Mejia can, can stay true to those keys to victory. And we'll get to Romero's keys to victory after this third round. Or second round, excuse me. Is Romero, the Argentine from Buenos Aires in the blue and gold trunks, and Mejia, the Mexican from TJ, Tijuana, in the black trunks with the green, white, and red. Seems to me like this is going to be the battle of the left hands because Mejia doesn't seem to have any pop on that right hand, and Romero seems to be very dominant with that lead hand, double, tripling up that left hand over the right hand. So we'll, whose left hand is going to be most effective here? Well, so far, it's been Romero. Yeah. For sure. He's been mixing up nicely, head and body. There it is again. Beautiful. Triple triple Oof. left hand. That's what I said. He, he doesn't really let that right hand go the way he does his left. If anything, the right hand is used to, to set up yeah. the left hand more than to connect and, and be powerful. It's funny, during early, early in my career, people used to ask if I was left-handed because my left hand was very, very busy. But in reality, what the problem was, most of the time, my right hand was broken. I went oh. into fights with a broken <laughs> hand. I broke it during fight. I broke my right hand many, many times. Oof. So I had, to, I had to fight very much with just my left hand in a lot of fights. So people assumed that I was left-handed. But I think Romero might actually be left-handed from what I'm, what I'm seeing. The way he just paused with the right to land the left. So how do, you, how do you deal with that during a fight when you have a... a a broken hand, do you? Oh, good Ooh. right hand, rocks Mejia. There's the uppercut as well. Mejia's in trouble on the ropes. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, the good power in that right <laughs> hand from Romero. He just likes the left. Goes with the uppercut there, with the lead uppercut with the left. Maybe, maybe he's just saving that right hand for. Yeah, saving that for the power shot. Exactly. It goes again with the right hand there, backing Mejia into the ropes. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to set up the power shot, the right hand, with the lead hand. But most guys just skip right to the, right to their power hand. Combination there by Romero, blocked by Mejia, but still. Things happen, it goes to the body. Mejia, now his right hand. No longer with that awkward chopping, more of a conventional. Yeah, that uppercut was much better. Much better delivery on that shot. And body shots open for Romero if he could see it. He just doubled up on that left hook on the right side of the body of Mejia, and the body was wide open, but didn't take didn't take the opportunity. Head hunting too much at this point. And last 10 seconds of the second round, a round that Romero showed that he the right hand can be effective. Yeah, most effective punch of the fight so far from either man was that chopping, looping right hand from Romero that caught Mejia. Rocked him just a touch. Yeah, Argentine's trying to go three for three for three in the, the fight card here on Pro Box TV. 
Boom! Ooh. There's that shot. Beautifully timed. Overhand right. Nice and short. Right around the guard. Cracked him on the Oof. temple. Mejia felt that one. But recovered nicely. Mejia is a very tough guy. Yeah, you can see the legs wobble a little bit after that right hand over the top there. And as you mentioned, Mejia recovering very well. Bravis Mejia. Third time that he's fighting outside of Mexico. And the two times that he has fought outside of Mexico coming into this fight, he's been good. He's lost both times, and one of them was a third round TKO in September of 2019. As I mentioned, Argentine fighters trying to go three for three in this special presentation of Pro Box TV from the Club Union Electrica in Cordoba. to the body, Mejia responds, backing up off the ropes. Those, those left, those left hands. Nice jabs there from Romero to start round three. Oof. Slick little head movement there on the inside from Romero. And he dodges a good flurry of punches there from Mejia. Nasha heads on the inside there, accidental. Doesn't look to be any cut. Both men complaining. That's one thing, George. People don't understand. Yeah. Like fighters feel pain. Headbutts hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Headbutts <laughs> hurt. Whether they cut you or not, they hurt. They look painful from. <laughs> from and I've here. been I've been headbutted so hard by guys. Like I saw stars. Like it's not just like you know you get rocked by a punch. You can get rocked by a headbutt as well. Right. Oof. Skull on skull action. And and you def sparring definitely can't prepare you for that. No. 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 It's sparring, you got headgear is much softer than. And that bone, really, you know, with the skull. Ooh. Good hard exchange of jabs there. I think Romero got the better of it. Ooh, good body work from Mejia on the inside. And that chopping right hand over the top. Didn't quite connect, but still the body work was impressive. Mm, here we go, Romero digging to the body. Like I mentioned last round, there's going to be openings for that. Both, both fighters mm. taking advantage of those openings. When you have a loose and fluid left hand, lead hand, the way that Romero does, it sets up the lead body shot really well because the, the opponent is is so worried about where that left hand is coming from. Could be a jab, it could be a hook, it could be downstairs, it could, could be downstairs, it could be an uppercut. A lot of times that liver becomes exposed and you can crack that shot off of those combinations with the lead hand. Every time I think of liver shot, I think of the last Wednesday night fights that Angelo Leo, Mike Plania knock out. Beautiful, beautiful shot from Leo. <laughs> Both Filipinos went down to body shots that night. Yeah, that's right. Plania went down, and then also uh, a couple fights earlier. Good work here from Romero. Yeah, digging, digging power shots. Both sides of the head and body of Mejia. Mejia staying tough, but not throwing a lot back here in round three. Less than 30 seconds remaining here in round three, and... And he is starting to feel the power, or I wouldn't say starting, he's feeling the power of Romero, especially with some good body shots there from the Argentine in blue and gold. Speaking of Romero, it was Romero Duno was the other Filipino I was talking go. about who got knocked out. We have a fighter named Romero here, and he was named Romero. Still can, still can remember. Good round good, three good for round. Romero. Yes. The body work was especially impressive. Yep. For, for, for Romero, for me. He, he must yeah. have saw the same thing I saw in round two, that that body was going to be there. Or maybe his corner saw it and told him in between yep. rounds. Here we see some of that good work from Romero, digging those uppercuts. There we go, trade Ooh. shots. Mejia landed a nice left hook. Let's see if we're going to see that from a different angle. Right there, bang. Actually, Mejia got the better of that. That left hook he landed, Romero didn't quite see, backed him up, but didn't stem the tide for too long because Romero came right back. One thing you have to say, these three, there's the Romero, the keys to victory. The combinations cut the ring and remain patient. He's done all three of those quite well thus far. Combinations for sure, especially with that lead hand. And then cutting the ring there, you figure with that left, left hand, restricted the movement of Mejia. By the way, you talked about Romero Duno getting, that was Antonio Moran knocking him out in that yeah, fight. Antonio Moran looked very good Ooh, that night. Sure very, did. very good. Sure did. He's the winningest man in Pro Box TV History. Oh, yeah? He has more wins on Pro Box TV air than anyone else. We got to give him a special belt. Yeah, right? There's a special belt for that. He gets the Pro Box belt. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe.
and like at our YouTube page as we are trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and subscriber number 100,000. That's something special. So go ahead and like and subscribe on our YouTube page. You know, George, I, I like this Romero. He actually does a lot of the same things I used to do because I was so busy with my lead hand. Okay. I would wish I could see him jab some more. That was one thing that I was known for was my jab because it sets up a lot of these power punches with that lead hand. But other than that, I really like what I'm seeing. And he's been effective with that left hand, so oh, yeah. the jab would work really well. He's got a great left hand. Okay. Very fluid in the shoulder. To have a to have a left hand like that that's able to go high and low, up and down and through the middle, you got to have a very fluid and, and mobile shoulders to do that. It takes a lot of athleticism to double, triple up shots with the same hand. This fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. It's super featherweight, or super pluma, as they say in Spanish, for the vacant WBO Latino super featherweight title. Entertaining so far here in Cordoba. Juan Cejas win it by unanimous decision over Alexis Sicilia. Nice dig to the body from Romero. So a deep breath from Mejia as he took a step back. Ooh. Romero connecting there. Yeah, Romero, um, excuse me, Mejia just does not seem willing to exchange. A little too much firepower coming his way. And just the artillery that Mejia is packing just doesn't seem enough to keep Romero off. Now Romero is using the right hand a little more here in this in this fourth round. That's one thing. When you're so busy with one hand and then you kind of leave the other hand to rest and then you bring it on, your opponent's not, not ready for that shot. Gets accustomed to all left, 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 and then you throw a good right hand, which you saw in round two. Start with Tomas, the referee, saying, watch the head. Be careful of the head. A little blood from the nose of the uh, Ooh, Romero. Nice combination. Romero starting to, I think he's starting to see the openings here where he can do damage to Mejia. And that's what's so great about the jab. Once you have that left jab sticking and moving on a guy, you're not wasting a lot of energy. You're controlling the pace. You're controlling the distance. And you see the openings that much better so you can load up on those big shots. Romero Mejia, end of round four here in Cordoba. And... One of the great shows we have here on ProBox TV is Spotlight Interview, and we interviewed one of the best in the world in Teofimo Lopez. I got a kid. I got a kid. And yeah. I don't want my son to, to deal with that. You know, if we don't fix this right now as adults and as men, then then where do we stand in, in the jury of God's eyes? But Look, he gave you, he gave you, Paulie, a gift. He gave me a gift. And it's what we do with that gift that allows us to be much greater. We end up becoming either great or the greatest. And that's the, that is the fine cue right there that puts the infinite sign. Mm. And it's like no one kind of quite understands it, but Teofimo does. And did I cry for four days before I signed this contract with Jermaine Ortiz? Freak, yes, I did. Yes, I did. You know why? Because I know what it's going to take for me to do this again. Winning the Sugar Ray Robinson Award at 23 years young. Only fought one time that year. COVID, the bubble, Lomachenko. Yep. Beat Richard Comey prior to that at 22 years young, winning my first world title where? In the Mecca of boxing. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am set in stone. It is set in stone for me to fix boxing. And I don't know where it's going to take me, but I know that my main focus is February 8th. You put it all together in all perspective. This year is the year of the dragon, the year of the infinite. So we had at war. It's at war, man, and I know what you want to say, Paulie, and I'm on it with you, my man. And I know that if we both was on this, we we'd chew up the boxing world like it was uh well, like it was some breakfast. Hey, uh, Dale, we, we we all got a gift. You know, we not just the ones who box, <laughs> the rest of us who who are broadcasters as well. <laughs> man, he knows how to promote a fight. I can't wait to see that fight with him and Ortiz. That is gonna be good. Yeah, I mean, that fight, I don't think, needs a lot of promotion, especially yeah. for anyone who really knows both fighters. Jermaine Ortiz is a, a, an excellent, his nickname is his ignition for a reason. Yep. Great matchup. They have an amateur pass together. They fought each other in the finals of the national tournament, which is a big deal. 
no easy task for Tiafima Lopez. Very, very good fight on our hands. Right ahead, Super Bowl weekend, or Super Bowl week on ESPN. Tiafima Lopez against Jermaine Ortiz, says here in Cordoba. Round number five of a schedule 10 for the WBO, the vacant WBO Latino Super Featherweight title. Miguel Mejia and Bravis in the black trunks with the green, white, and red. And the Argentine, Neri Romero, El Maldito, in the blue and gold. Going to the body early here in this fifth round is Romero. Romero doing a nice job setting that hook upstairs with the stab jab to the body first. Goes down low and then rips that left hook upstairs. Yeah, looking for an opening. There it is again, hooking up the jab. That left hand so far by Romero has been pretty much unstoppable. I mean, he has no answer for it. Very, very busy left hand. There it is again. Hook and then to the body. Short left of Mejia. Good body work there. Body shot left hook to the liver. Liver side from Romero. Romero now in close quarters against delivering some shots there to Mejia. Mejia landed a nice left hook on the inside there. A little counter shot. Got the attention of Romero. Ooh, good slip and rip from Romero on the inside. First upstairs, then downstairs. Both hard shots with the left hand. Nice little uppercut, too. They're showing that the, the angles and diversity of the with, with well armed. All the angles there. Mixing up his punch as well. And every once in a while, he'll rip that right hook. That, that's not a bad punch either. He, he gets some good power on that shot, good leverage with that short looping right hook over the top. And we saw an overhand. I'd still argue that he's probably a lefty by nature, is Romero. But the right hand ain't bad either. Yep. So for a lefty to go orthodox is... It's it actually way right? more common than you would think. Oscar oh, okay. De La Hoya was a converted southpaw. Um, pretty, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's surprisingly common. You also get it the other way. You get some guys who are who are righties who convert into southpaw. Like Winky Wright was actually right-handed. Yeah, because kind of the natural inclination is if you're a right-hander, you're orthodox, and if you're left-handed, you're strong on you go. Southpaw, but well, that, at least that's how we're trained. Next. Yeah, but right. you're supposed to be so busy with their lead hand. A lot of guys, guys will switch because of that reason, and they'll have a very good lead hand, just like Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya was his jab and his left hook. Yep. It worked to a Hall of Fame career for Oscar De La Hoya. There's less than 10 minutes remaining here in this fifth round. Yeah, fighting back there with some body shots toward the end of the round, but Romero looks to be in control here. And he's home prophet, or he's from Buenos Aires, excuse me, which is just south of Cordoba. He's a Porteño. Porteño. As long as he's a, as long as he's not a River fan, we're good. <laughs> Shout out to all the Argentine football fans. Hey, Argentina is the land of the world champion, so we have to. Right, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta plug that in there. Yes, sir. It's been a great night of fights here on Pro Box TV. Juan Cejas going to 7 0 with his unanimous decision victory over Alexis Sicilia. Then Nicolas Vergara, 7 0, 6 by knockout after his second round stoppage of Gerardo Murillo. And I'd like to remind you, Friday, February 16th, our next live fight event here on Pro Box TV. Check it out on YouTube. Israel Picasso of Mexico against Ramon Cardenas. Our main event scheduled for 10 rounds at the Super Bantamweight division. Should be a great one there. Normally it's Wednesday night, but Wednesday night is Valentine's Day. So we're giving you a chance to be with the ones you love or be by yourself if that's what you want to do. And then Friday night... Getting it on on Pro Box TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Oh, big right hand there by Mejia to start round six. Halfway through here in this 10 round affair. Now, I think we start with Tomas breaking them up after Mejia pinned on the ropes. 
Nice body shot there, set up by the right hand. Right hand and left hook to the liver. Looked to have landed well. I mean, he had took it well. Romero trying to lead on Mejia, trying to get him onto the ropes there. Just short with the right hand is Mejia. Romero seems to be slowing down a little bit. Doesn't have that same lateral movement he had earlier. Mejia. Awkward there, uppercut attempt there with the right hand by Romero. And it's just the third time in his career, Romero's career, that he's had a fight scheduled oh, for cut. 10 rounds. And yep, clash of heads. Oh, yeah, it's Bad coming. cut over the eyebrow of Romero. Yeah, the left eye. Oh, and taking a point. Manosuno minus one for the head, but there. Certain jurisdictions will actually penalize the fighter who doesn't get caught. Let's see, is there an intent? Oh, yeah. yeah. Those, those kinds like that, those slicing headbutts. Ah, oh. yeah, that's bad. Yeah. And that's above, above the eye. That's a bad Ooh. spot. Yep. Bad spot. And Gustavo Tomas, the referee, has been throughout the course of this fight warning both fighters about the headbutts. So. Looks to be a little on the outside of the brow, so hopefully he doesn't drip into the eye, because that's when it gets dangerous. Yeah. Look to me, Mejia is going across with the head. You wanna, I think he wanted to throw that right hand right, and so he was trying Chop, to. And there it is again. Yeah. Same, same motion. Yeah, that eye is gushing here. Oh, this is where the cut man earns his salary, right? Yeah, the. The unheralded cut man of the sport. <laughs> Can make or break a fighter in certain situations. If the fight were to be stopped, though, we'll go to the scorecard and they will, they will score whatever portion of the round that you're in. And the winner will be decided based on the scores of. Well, I would think that if they go to the scorecards at this point, Romero would, yeah, would be the winner. I got it, yeah. Yeah. Now he's got also a point deduction. So. They have clashed heads several times. They both seem like they hit once and once more. So an interesting development here in the sixth round with Mejia being deducted a point for a headbutt. The referee saying last ten. Seems to be an adjustment here from Romero. Since he's been cut, he's been more of the boxer on the outside, using the jab, using the distance a little bit, which is smart. You don't want to take more damage to that already injured eye. Now that now this is going to be important here, how they treat the, ooh, that is. Wide open. Yeah. Oh. Well, we've seen one fight. Well, we know that Tyson Fury fight has been delayed and postponed because of a cut to the eye there, but that was in training, obviously. Very serious matter. Here's Here it is again. Uh, yeah. And he felt it immediately. But slicing, slicing headbutt. Yeah. Oh. Bad spot above the Segundos eye. All right, now we're going to see. Yeah. We mentioned the cut, man. This is where he gets paid. This is the big money right here for him. This is where he earns his salary, earns his paycheck. I've only had two cuts in my entire career. Yeah, I was going to ask, what's that like when you have in the in the middle of the, the intensity, the adrenaline of a fight? One of, one of them was during my world title fight, but my eye was swollen so badly it closed the cut, so it wasn't Ooh. really an issue. And then another time I was, I was fighting, it was basically a, a stay busy fight because I had a big big title eliminator next, which got pushed off because of the cut. And that aggravated me quite a bit, because during the fight, I'm thinking, man, I know it now I can't fight in two months like I'm supposed to. Right. It got, it got in my head a little bit. Well, and now that, I mean, it has to change his, his, his strategy here, right, the cut? Uh, not necessarily, it depends. I mean, it, when I fought, it did, because I didn't want any more damage done to the eye. 
I wanted to make sure I was going to be ready for that title eliminator. That was more important to me. Um, you know, I, I took it as a get this win tonight, look good, look look good next time, which is exactly what happened because I ended up scoring a knockout for the title eliminator. But uh, yeah, I, I boxed very differently after I was cut. Took a lot less risks on the inside, used my jab, stayed on the outside. Exactly what Romero's doing right now, yeah. actually. He's using his feet, he's boxing from the outside, staying long. Very different style than he was employing in the first five, five six rounds of this fight. Oh, oh. Now he's getting inside, and now he's got Mejia in trouble here. Gets a rise out of the crowd here in Cordoba. Good combinations there from Romero, mixing up his punches very nicely. Yeah, you see, he's yeah. boxing a lot more, a lot more head movement. Not taking the risk to be in the inside and have that cut get any wider. And that's where that left hand that's been so effective really starts to shine even more, can become more effective. The fact that he's already kind of established that. And you can see, they, they, they've, they've kind of switched roles. Mejia now is coming forward. He's throwing more punches. He's being more aggressive. He understands that he's got a man in front of him who's not going to overwhelm him, but he's going to be moving. So he's got a little momentum on his side. Meadow showing the, the good lateral movement, as you mentioned, Chris, yeah. And some guys who have a like sparring partner and journeyman mentality, yeah. which it seems right like Mejia does, a lot of times they'll see a guy bleeding and they see it as a chance, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to come on now. And it seems like that's what Mejia is doing. Because he was getting shut out on my scorecards. Now the burn looks almost done through, almost through to the, or less than, as we approach the 30-second mark here in the seventh round. Scheduled for 10 for the WBO Latino Super Featherweight title. Say what you will about the skill of Mejia. Yeah, he is one tough cookie. He's been yeah. taking big shots upstairs and downstairs. Nice right hand there from Mejia. Yeah, straightened it out this time instead of that chopping shot. Yeah. Back comes Romero. Good right hand connection there by Romero. And now, well, the TJ boys. Very tough. Well, Mexican fighters overall are, are yes. have a reputation of being tough. A lot of pride. Yep. A lot of pride in the Mexican warrior heart. So many great champions from oh, yeah. the great nation of Mexico. Of course, we got, I mean, Marco Antonio Barrera, Jorge Travioso Arce, and one of the Marquez contributors to us on Pro Box TV in Espanol and Spanish. Great champions in the right, Hall of Famers as well. There's that combination. I thought for a second there, Mejia would be on the verge of going down the way Romero poured it on, but Mejia's experience. Yeah. That was actually a good round for Mejia, but that combination so sealed it for me. Yeah. I still gave that to Romero. Close round, better round for Mejia, but still too much good work from Romero. Also, I, from what I just saw, it looks like that cut got bigger. It looks a little wider than it did the round before. I don't see, oh, there we go. I was going to say, I don't see a lot of Vaseline being, being applied. doesn't look like there's any adrenaline being applied. A lot of times, the cut man will put adrenaline into the cut and then cover it with Vaseline. Ooh, okay. So you, so you trap that adrenaline there so the medicine can do its job, which is the it's a vasoconstrictor. Closes up those blood vessels so there's not as much blood running to that open wound. But also, a lot of guys will mix their, their Vaseline with the adrenaline, mm. so that could be a mixture. I have to give credit to, to the cut man because it doesn't seem, I mean, Romero has changed his, his strategy a little bit, but it's not so profuse that it's affecting his vision or anything like that, so. It doesn't actually seem to be getting in his eye. Ooh, wild right hand there by Mejia. It's just far, far, far enough on the outside of that eyebrow that it's, it's bleeding around the cheekbone, not directly into the eyeball, which is very dangerous because a fighter who can't see is a fighter who can't defend himself. Especially from the wider punches, right? The hooks right. and things they like can, that? Yeah, you, they leave your field of vision, they hit you, you get hurt that much more. The punches you don't see are the ones that hurt. Ooh, good right hand Oof. there from Mejia, good timing shot. Yeah, Romero is much more. Oh, nice uppercut in the inside. Alto, alto, abra. Vamos, abra, abra. Different fight yeah. since the cut, yes, though. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Romero is, is not as confident to exchange on the inside, not as aggressive. He's been backing up. Mejia has been growing in confidence by, by the, the ability to come forward. I don't think he's winning Mejia, but he's definitely more in this fight than he was in the first six rounds. Uppercut there missed by Mejia, but both these fighters are have a lot of experience. This is the 17th 
professional Pfeiffer Romero, obviously undefeated. And for Mejia, this is fight number 25, or 26, excuse me. So these, these two know their way around the ring. Once again, another warning with the head. Romero. That's another good thing about having a good jab is heads don't come together too, too, yeah. too often. <laughs> if you can keep a guy on the outside of your of your reach, yeah. chances yeah. of a headbutt go way down. Yeah, I don't remember Larry Holmes suffering too many headbutts with that with, <laughs> with his legendary jab. Yep. That's one of the reasons why, like I said, I got cut so few times. I had a very long reach. I use my jab a lot. Break! Oh. Oh. Closing in on the end of round, or approaching the end of round number eight. And Romero showing, I guess, his versatility. In the first, before the cut, he was a little, brawling a little bit more. And then after the cut, he's been boxing and moving. Well, I mean, he was very dominant with his combinations before the cut. Now yeah. he's been taking more of a boxer-puncher approach. Been giving up ground. Certainly, I believe he was more effective when he was being aggressive and throwing combinations than he is now. Yeah, Pro Box TV, your boxing channel, has some great shows, including my favorite sparring session. Rolly Merrill's much, I think, I, I would agree he's much better than I think he shows, but he's just so wild and he's so, I mean, listen, the personality a lot of times you got outside the ring is the way you are inside the ring. And I think he's so wild-minded outside of the ring, it carries over into his style and, his, and, and the way that he fights. He, he gets ahead of his skis, so to speak, and I think there will be opportunities for Cruz, especially later on, to build and break down uh, uh, Roly as, as we go in the fight. I just think he's been there before. He's got more experience. He's durable. He's more durable. And I think he's got that dogged mentality. His name is Pitbull for a reason. He comes forward. He, once he gets those jaws on you, he's going to lock in. I see him locking in on Romero and taking him deep into deep waters and drowning him. This isn't deep waters, but that, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm picturing from Pitbull. What, 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 what is this? Just because your name is Pitbull, you're going to close, close jaws and everything else. Where, where's the breakdown? There's no way. No, Roley's going to win this fight. Roley has a dog in him as well. He, he fights. We've seen him even before. Look, so everybody remembers the Javante Davis fight where he was winning and then he got knocked out. But he, he had some decent wins before that as well. Yes, he's hot and cold. But this is a guy who presses you, but he comes in the front door when Pitbull Cruz. He, you, you can, he can be picked off. He can be hit on the way, on, on the way inside. He's going to land his own shots, of course. But both guys go back and forth here. I think Roley's pretty durable regardless of the knockout Break. loss he faced. Right. Roley is only is a bully. He's only pressing you when he's in control. The Mourinho's fight. I was there for that fight. The guy did not. He didn't win that fight either. Yeah, sparring sessions are always big fun. And Friday night fights. Well, Wednesday night fights will push to Friday because of Valentine's Day. It's going to be big fun as well. It's right Picasso. And why is it your friends from Thinkers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should be a good one there. Picasso Cardenas. You know what, what our illustrious producer, Bruno Santos, came up with a great idea? A sparring sessions tournament. Like, Sean Porter and Tim Bradley on one side, like a semifinal, and then you and Paulie in one semifinal, and then the winner, they meet in a sparring Segundo. sessions final. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be fun to see. Good luck to the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. They, there you go. Fighting words from the fighting collegian here on Provox TV, Chris Algieri. The reigning sparring sessions champion. Round number nine here in this one between Romero and Mejia. Mejia, the Mexican in the green, white, and red with the black trunks. And Romero, the Argentine, undefeated in the blue and gold trunks. For the vacant WBO Latino super featherweight title. Both of these fighters have fought at multiple weight classes or different weight classes. Mejia as heavy as 140. And Romero at 135 as well before, so this fight at 130. Ooh, nice double, triple, quadruple left hand from Romero. Nice nice combination there with the lead hand. Ooh, there's that yeah. shopping, Whoa. strange overhand shot from Mejia, that right hand, that slapping overhand punch. It finally connects right after nine rounds. <laughs> he actually has a pretty decent uppercut on that right hand. He's landed several of those. Every time Romero gets something going, gets a, a good flurry going, the crowd responds. I think Romero's corner told him, hey, listen, go back to what we were doing early on when you were aggressive and throwing combinations with the left hand. Because now he's stepping forward, he's not moving around. 
or maybe they were just waiting for the medicine to take its and, take yep. its role because now he's not bleeding as much over that eye. So sometimes it takes a round or two for the medicine to get in there to coagulate the blood, restrict that flow. So it almost looks like, from our vantage point, that there was no cut. I mean, it, it, that's yeah, what it's not it bleeding anymore. Like. Yeah, and we're already two minutes through round number nine, and their heads are coming together. Yep. Also. Is that just kind of a boxing thing, or is that something that he is maybe intentionally doing with the head there? I, don't I think it's just the way that their styles are matching up because Romero is so busy, and also he's so, he's so active with that lead hand. It's not it's not home to protect him like that. So the heads are coming together, and the way that Mejia throws punches, those looping, chopping shots, he tends to lead with his head. Yeah, that was the case with that. That led to the cut. So you can see how he falls forward over his front foot. Yeah. That cut happening in the sixth round, and Mejia deducted a point by the referee, Gustavo Tomas, in the sixth round for the headbutt. Romero, flurry inside, Mejia responding. Ooh, Ooh there's that, shot there. That, that right hand coming through. Right on that injured eye. Now we see some blood again coming from that eye. And, and Romero responding by moving a little bit, right? dancing, going from side to side. And we are headed for the ten tenth and final round. Here in Cordoba, what has been an exciting night of boxing in collaboration with Samson Boxing and Teo Box. There was that four punch combination with the left hand from Romero that I was talking about early in the round. Yeah, Romero went yeah. back to the way that he was fighting in the first six rounds before the cut, letting those hands go, throwing combinations, being very busy with the left hand. Yeah, last round here for both of these fighters, especially for Mejia to, to pull out a victory here in the main event. As the Argentine fighters trying to go three for three, three wins, three victories. Or three fights, three Segundo, victories for Argentine fighters here. Decimo, Tenth and final round here for the WBO Latino Super Featherweight title. Neri Romero, the Argentine in blue and gold, and the Mexican Miguel Bravis Mejia in the black, green, white, and red. And Maldito trying to remain undefeated. See what Mejia can pull off here in this 10th and final round. To pull off what would be a surprising result. Yeah, it doesn't, no home cooking necessary for yeah. Romero here. Mejia needs to have a big round. Really needs to score a knockout on live scorecard. Romero going to the body there. Which, barring something miraculous, doesn't seem to be like it. Body shot there from Romero. Oh, Ooh, another body. one. Yeah. It's going back to that left hand there. It was so effective earlier in the fight. Oh, something. <laughs> Whoa, something just flew off. Some sweat, some perspiration, but there was some hard shots there. Yeah, Romero's digging in deep here in round 10. Really trying to put an exclamation point in this, this performance thus far. Alto, alto side, oh. That's the way you want to finish it there. Don't want to leave it to chance. You figure he's up on the scorecards, but final round at home. As you mentioned, put that exclamation point. Don't leave any doubts. I like it. Go for it in that last yeah. round. Mejia only has seven knockouts in his career, so he's shown some power, but it's not a big part of his resume. Now you can see the way he throws his shots. He's certainly not a power puncher. Like I said, uh, barring something miraculous, I can't see him scoring a knockout in this last minute. But Romero, I mean, he's still going for it. He might catch him with something, but he hasn't been able to really hurt me uh, too badly tonight. Romero searching there, getting in between the, the defense of Mejia. Looks like 
Mejia now battling a couple of body shots there. There's Romero pinning Mejia onto the ropes. And Maldito trying to make life difficult here for in the ring for Mejia. You hear the crowd rising to give Romero that extra bit of energy to finish this fight. Secure the victory. Ten seconds remaining here. And barring a, a one-punch miracle shot here, this fight is going to go the distance. Ten rounds here in Cordoba. And Neri Ariel Cruz Romero is very confident that he has won this fight. Don't forget, February 16th, Friday Night Fights, live from the Pro Box TV Events Center in Plant City, Florida. On the app and on YouTube, Israel Picasso and Ramon Cárdenas, the main event. And this fight, the same night as the Oshaki Foster fight. And our card is definitely going to be much better and much more exciting. And certainly it's going to be a great card for us, uh, Chris, on this one for Friday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. We say it all the time. We are confident to go head-to-head -head with any cards that are out there any given night yep. of the year. We have fantastic matchups. Our matchmakers do their due diligence, make the best fights possible. Not just making good fighters a good fighter, making good fighters a good matchups that are gonna that are gonna produce great fights. That's why we we're so confident in going head to head with anyone else out there. And let me tell you something. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and when you look at the best fights of 2023, when you had all these YouTube videos coming out of best fights of 2023, at least two or three fights on every video I saw were pro box cards. So good fighters and great fights. Let's take a listen to the official decision. Tarjeta del señor Enrique Ferrero. Enrique Ferrero scores the fight. 100 to 89. Tarjeta del señor Jorge González. Jorge González scores the fight. 97. 97 92. En decisión unánime. Es ganador por puntos. Decision. Y se Winner consagra points. campeón latino champion super pluma. The WBA the Latino Super Featherweight. Boxeo. Title. El hombre de San Martín, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And the man from Buenos Aires, Neri Ariel Romero, improves to 17 and 0, nine by knockout. Unanimous decision winner, and no surprise there. He really was the better fighter over the course of 10 rounds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was uh, very aggressive, very good with that lead hand. I, I was impressed with with Romero tonight. I'd like, I'd like to see him again. And the Argentines go three for three. All three Argentines go undefeated and win their respective bouts. Don't forget, Friday, February 16th, our next live event on Pro Box TV on our YouTube channel. It is presented by sportsbetting.ag, the official betting sponsor of Wednesday Night Fights. Although this one will take place on a Friday, February 16th, Israel Picasso and Ramon Cárdenas, the main event from the Pro Box TV Event Center in Plant City, Florida. Congratulations to Neri Romero, the WBO Latino Super Featherweight Champion. I am George Metellus alongside Chris Algieri. Thank you very much on behalf of the Pro Box TV crew, Samsung Boxing and Theo Box. Thank you for watching this presentation here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.